Hello you lovely lot, it's me again, Jen from After School Art Club. Um, I hope you've had a lovely week. Have you had a lovely week, mums and dads? Have you had a lovely week? Hope so. So, normally my second lesson for After School Art Club, I look at pointillism. So today I'm just going to show you a nice task that we can do related around pointillism. So, does anybody know what pointillism is? Here's an example, this is one of the boards that I'll set up in class. So, pointillism is a way of painting where painters use tiny dots of colour instead of paintbrushes. So it is a form of impressionism. And by using the dots of colour in certain places, they can build up an impression of a picture. So there is a famous French artist called Georges Seurat. If I've said that nice, I wish I had a nice French accent so that I could pronounce that probably a bit better. So his famous painting is a Sunday on Lake Grande Jatte. If I've said that right, apologies if I've said that wrong. Um, so this is a, quite a large painting if you get the chance to ever see it and as you can probably make out you can see that there are some people on some grass on the bank of a river with some trees behind. Now actually the clever thing about this picture is this picture is all made up of dots so instead of using a paintbrush he, every brush stroke is actually made by a dot if that makes sense. So if you were to look at that picture far away your brain can understand because the dots are in certain places so create an image um, and realises what it's seeing so you can understand that you're looking at people on the riverbank. But if you were to look at this picture really close up and you won't, it won't be effective I'm afraid due to my camera but um, it's actually made up of lots of dots so it's, so it's like a pixelated picture if you're looking at it close up but it all kind of makes sense further back you go. So uh, George Surratt was actually a uh, post French post impressionist and he believed he could use colour to create harmony and emotion in art. So I believe that's true. I think emotion, um, an artist expresses their emotion through doing their paintings and through mixing their colours or their sculpture, um, through anything that they do, whether it might be a video or some acting, you know, it's, it's expressing emotion, isn't it? Expressing how you feel. Um, it's just being creative, which is which I think is really important for the soul, that we've all got the opportunity to be creative. So, um, this picture that he did actually took him two years. Can you imagine doing a picture for two years? That's crazy, right? Here's some other examples of his work. So this is quite a famous picture. It's kind of a um, kind of can-can scene of some French girls dancing on his Eiffel Tower. Um, and again, all these pictures are made up of dots. So the task that we are going to do today is we're going to make our own dotty picture. So the second thing I talk to um, at Art School Art Club with my kids is we look at the ideas of colour. So some of you may, may or may not already know about the colour wheel, but um, the colour wheel uh, represents the different colours that we have and how we use them. So does anybody know what a primary colour is? If you think... Um, uh, you probably, yeah, probably a lot of you would know what primary colour is. You would have heard it at school for sure. So a primary colour um, is, and I can show you here, uh, red, yellow and blue colour. And a secondary colour, hopefully you can see that, is green, orange and purple. And this is it on the colour wheel. And an interesting fact is that you cannot make a primary colour. So if you think about mixing colours together, and my kids all the time are asking me, what does this colour make? What does that colour make? If I mix this, if I mix that. If you tried to create yellow, red or blue, you wouldn't be able to do it. You try and think about what you'd, what colours you'd use to make yellow. Well, you kind of can't mix two colours in together to make yellow. Whereas with secondary colours, secondary colours, if you can see that, are actually made up of mixing primary colours together. So we would all know that... If we mix blue and yellow together, that would make green. If we were to mix yellow and red together, that would make orange. And if we were to mix red and blue together, that would make purple. So I get the kids in class to um, think about colours, and think about the colours that we're going to use in order to create our pointings and picture. And actually what we do is I give them a limited um, palette. So I'll set out on table so actually all you need before we start is some paints so ideally if you've got these colours if you haven't got these colours no worries use any colour you like if you haven't got paints no worries I'll give you an alternative at the end 
So you need some paints, ideally uh, yellow, blue, green and red. And then I add some white in, but I just limit the palette so that the kids can then mix up to create the colours. So as you're doing your dots, you're thinking about what colours you're creating when you're layering up the dots. And I'm holding up uh, these cotton buds because this is what we're going to do to create the dots. So rather than use a paintbrush, we use the ends of the cotton buds so that when you dip your paint in, you will be doing, hopefully you can see that you'll be creating some dots. So if you don't have cotton buds, that's okay. Um, if you've got an old pencil that you could use the end of, think of any kind of material that you could create a circular or dot shape from. So maybe, um, like I said, the end of a pencil or like the top of a lid. Um, you know, if you have like a really small lid that you could just dip that into the paint to create the, some dots, that would be great. So I start off by giving the kids in my art class you'd get a um just a picture of a fish that i've already drawn just because it's a simple shape that we can then create color with using our dots if you're confident drawing your own picture draw your own picture that's fine um if you wanted to draw a fish that's also great um if you're but if you find that perhaps drawing a fish is a bit tricky um <coughs> excuse me here's a good way of thinking about it you're kind of drawing an oval shape so if you can see that so you're kind of drawing kind of almost like a flat flat squished circle if you think of it in shapes so that would be my fish body and then i would go to draw another shape like that and then i bring the edge edge in so it's a bit like a uh kind of a snapping uh, that reminds me of a pac-man shape but you might be a little bit too young to know what that is so that would be my shape of my fish and then I do some fins on top and I do some fins on the bottom. So when you're drawing pictures, just always think about them. If you're finding it a bit tricky, break it down into the shapes that you see, because then you can always uh, rub out the bits that you don't need afterwards. So that would be my fish. I'm going to give him a little smile. Um, and then I'm just going to do that. And then the rest of my picture, I added some stones and some reeds so if i do that so there's my fish shape that uh yeah it looks a bit a bit funny but it looks okay just as an example to show you how to easily draw a fish so that's what we would do so the task is that using your paints or whatever you have to hand um you start off by creating small dots around your area so and then you're going to fill um, so here I've filled all the background blue with the sea and then I've done my fish uh, red at the front and yellow for its body but gradually hopefully you can see that all right I've just layered up all the dots so I've kind of not mixed it um, by using like a brush stroke I've just added more and more dots and I think it looks really effective and if you complete the whole of the picture it gives you a really nice piece of artwork I think um, so you can use my idea of a fish or you can, if you're confident doing your own drawing, then do your own drawing. Now, like I said, if you don't have um, some paint to hand, all you need, me and my son have been experimenting with other options that you could do. So these are kind of paint pastels that I've got. So if you didn't have paint, you could still do dots. You could still do the dotty effect with the paint pastels or what we found was we had some stickers if you had a circular stickers at all or even if you um cut out circle shapes out of paper that would also give you the dot effect to then do dots on a picture and actually if you didn't have any of those the simplest thing is just to use some pens so instead of using a marking your pens using a, like a stroke to make a mark you can just dot your pens so what i did was i started really i do my do my picture of my flower and then i um use the lighter color so i use the tones of the color so uh, light pink kind of middle shade pink and dark pink so i added the light first and then the, gradually i added more and more dots in like a um darker tone so then it's easier to build up the effect of the picture so it's easier to add a darker color on top of a lighter color rather than a lighter color on top of a darker color so I hope that's given you some inspiration for today. I hope um, that's just a nice piece of creative art that you can do. So again, mummies and daddies can have 
five minutes to have a coffee or sit down or send an email. Um, I hope that's inspired you. Um, normally, as I've said before, around the um, art club, I'll have different stations so the kids can do different tasks. So one thing we also look at thinking about dot and um, circular shapes is um, you can make a dot mandala, if I've said that correctly. Um, a mandala means circle. And so this is a really beautiful little pattern um, that you can do where uh, I actually have some templates, but you could just draw some circles if you're quite confident doing dots in a circle. And then you can just layer up some beautiful dots um, and grow the circle out and out and out just with the different patterns. And it's so effective. You might have seen it before on um, stones. Often people paint these beautiful patterns on stones and it looks really lovely. Um, also... Again, these are just some stickers, but you can do it with some paper. If you cut out loads of circles, or maybe if mummy and daddy had a hole punch that you could borrow, please ask first. Um, you could punch uh, lots of holes of little paper, and then you could create a silhouette. This is just a little owl with some stickers that I've got. And then finally, we just think about other things that we've got around the house that are circular shape and try and make some pictures out of them. So I've used some bottle tops. Um, and buttons. Buttons are a really lovely effective way just to create a picture. During the last lockdown, me and my son did a lot of, lock, uh, well, we did a lot of art during lockdown, but we um, did some buttons and this was his little rocket. So we just stuck um, lots of buttons onto a shape that we drew. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Um, stay safe. I hope you have a good week and I will hopefully next week, I'm thinking I might do a bit of paper art where we can fold lots of paper to make some um, awesome shapes and some awesome sculptures. Or we might do a bit of cubism and pass Pablo Picasso. Hope I said that right. Okay, have a great week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you soon. Bye.